Well, speaking of um, things in space that are on Earth. Okay. Hmm. God, that's Wait. the worst one yet. <laughs> um, okay, so are you guys familiar with LIGO, the the Gravitational Wave Observatory? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. A little bit? Yeah. Y'all are familiar with how it works? Uh, is that the laser one? Yeah, so here, I'll pull it up. Um, yeah, I should have had this pulled up already, but I was doing a sponsor. Read, so, you know. <laughs> laser um, beams measure the things... So, so this is for the people who might not know what LIGO is. It stands for Laser Interferometer Gravitational Observatory. I mean, I obviously know, but for those people that don't know. Yeah, for all those others out there. <laughs> um, so this was a pretty groundbreaking experiment that measured gravitational waves for the first time. And this is one That's of right. those other things that proved Einstein right. Anyway, um, the way it works is... These two tunnels here, it's a laser, and it gets split into two different tunnels, as you can see in this animation that I pulled up just for you. And it bounces off a mirror. These are both like 40 miles long, by the way. And then they come back, and they combine again here at this mirror, and then go and, um, yeah, so it goes to the, the photo detector. Mm -hmm. So the deal is, basically, I'm just going to talk over this animation. Gravitational waves would cause a stretching of space-time which would, I think they're going to show them, yeah, see it kind of bending and flexing there a little bit? That's obviously mm -hmm. very exaggerated. But um, the idea is that oh. if a gravi gravitational wave from, say, a black hole collision passed through Earth, then it would cause this very tiny, tiny, tiny shift in these mirrors and cause the light to go in and out of phase. So that's the way, how they would be able to tell that um, you know, space-time had been stretched a little bit. And what's interesting about this is they had two of them. They had one in, um, one in Washington State, I believe, and one in Louisiana, so that it couldn't just be road noise or seismic Tectonic, activity yeah. or something like that. Yeah, it was, it was something that clearly passed all the way through the Earth. So they were able to measure gravitational waves with that for the first time, which is amazing. It's, and, and by the way, the, the sensitivity of this is like half as wide as a proton. Hmm. Like it can that's measure, insane, it yeah. can measure a difference that wow. small. That's what's so crazy about it. So they were able to take this exact same experiment and use it in a different way to show that quantum activity is affecting physical our size stuff. Hmm. So um, basically at the very, at the, in the, in the very smallest layer of everything, quantum activity, there's quantum fluctuations, basically quantum particles are always popping in and out of existence. You guys have probably heard about that whole thing because, you know, reality is weird when you get down to the quantum level. Um, so the question has always been like, does that constant activity of quantum fluctuation at that level, does that affect the macro world that we live in in any way? They've been able to prove that it actually does by using this incredibly sensitive instrument at LIGO, they were able to show that quantum fluctuations were actually quote unquote, kicking the mirror and moving it. Hmm. Obviously in, in incredibly, incredibly tiny ways, but um, this is a 40 kilogram mirror hmm. that quantum fluctuations were actually being, they were able That's to measure big. them. 40 kilograms. Yeah. It's a, it's a huge mirror. <laughs> That's a heavy. Yeah. Yeah, it Wait. says right here, researchers at the MIT LIGO laboratory saw that these fluctuations could move an object as large as a 40 kilogram mirror. Whoa. But how? Because that's like, what, 80, 88 <laughs> pounds, 90 pounds almost? Something like that, yeah. So if we could figure out how to like do this at a huge scale, could is this like literally the beginning of us understanding how to like do like anti gravity stuff? Um... Or like the force where you can just move things? Don't know that we could extrapolate it that far out, but maybe <laughs> the quantum fluctuation <laughs> in laser help? light can cause radiate cause a radiation pressure that can actually kick an object. See, I'm telling you, we're just gonna start yeah flying fl flying things around with the force. <laughs> Did we discover the force? Well, what we discovered is that like there, there's always this back and forth between like does the quantum world affect the real world that oh. we have. Um, Right. Quantum. Oh, what am I looking for here? What's the word? Um, theory? Or no, that's that's something to, totally different. Um, it's like the double slit experiment, uh, where they can pop in and out of existence. They can change phases. They can move into 
Well, entanglement's one thing, and that's sort of along the same lines. But anyway, we, we're always wondering, like, does that affect the real world in any way? And this is basically proving that it, it does. Mandela effect. It's real. I gotcha. <laughs> and now somebody's going to say that LIGO is, is tapping into another dimension and demons are coming over into our world. Well, and... and that one show is exactly right. Uh, Stranger Things, just, it was actually a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it turns out. <laughs> so this says that the researchers were able to use special equipment called a quantum squeezer, which I love that, uh, that allowed them to manipulate the noise so that it could be better observed. That's okay, so I've got crazy. a quantum lime. Can you hand me the quantum squeezer? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, is this suggesting that, like, you know, if there's a huge, I don't, I don't know how this stuff works, but say, you know, some crazy event like a supermassive black hole collapses or something and all this stuff gets thrown in quantum goobly gock bloop 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 and what if like that <laughs> hits something you know could it physically move something i don't know i don't know anything i'm scared at the tiniest levels let me just read this this paragraph because it's kind of awesome it says uh, uh it's talking about how this this sort of quantum noise in the background is always around us and it says uh who said this Nergis Mavalva, sorry guys, at the Marble Professor and head, Associate Head of the Physics Department at MIT. So he's at MIT. He says, we too, every nanosecond of our existence are being kicked around, buffeted by these quantum fluctuations. It's just the jitter, it's just that the jitter of our existence, the thermal energy is too large for these quantum vacuum fluctuations to affect our motion measurably. But with LIGO's mirrors, we've done all this work to isolate them from the thermally driven motion and other forces so that they're now still enough to be kicked around by quantum fluctuations in the spooky popcorn of the universe. <laughs> I love that. I like that. Spooky popcorn. Who doesn't popcorn. love that line? The spooky yeah. popcorn of the universe. Mm -hmm. That's anyway, crazy. I ran across this. I thought it was super interesting. So. That's amazing. There Dang. you go. Something to think about. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.